1. Hi everyone, it's Paul Barfett and I'm sitting here in Solid Rock Church in Drogheda in County Meath in the Republic of Ireland. And we just had a lovely Monday evening service here and I want to introduce you to one of the pastors and her name is Elaine Marrett. And I'd like you to hear Elaine's heart for her walk with Jesus and for her to tell you a little about the role that she has as a pastor in this dynamic church. Good, e Good evening everyone. Thank you Paul for having me talk on your YouTube channel which I believe is going to be a massive success. Um, we are so privileged this evening. Uh, my name's Elaine Marrett. I'm one of the pastors in the Solid Rock Church in Drada, and we were so privileged this evening, this evening to have Paul Bravet come and teach us on the character of a Christian and also lead the prayer time. Um, why I want to start at that, actually about the character of a Christian is to bring you back maybe three years, three years ago when I first became a pastor and how that started from a place of character. And I'll bring you back to three years ago when I was sitting in my sitting room and um, I was having a meeting with the senior pastor he wanted to meet with us. And I was very curious as to why he wanted to meet with us and but had no idea. But to cut a long story short, basically he came and he had prayed with the rest of the pastoral team and they had decided that um, and believed that I was the one to be asked to join the pastoral team. Now, if I'm honest, at that moment in time, I sat there in total disbelief because I didn't believe I was qualified. I didn't believe I had enough knowledge and I didn't believe um, I would have the confidence to stand up in front of a congregation. Absolutely. Are you crazy? No way of 300 to 500 people um, weekly. So if in my natural, I was said to him that day, really, if my answer is to be today, it's probably going to be a no because of these reasons. His answer to me was, yes, there's a certain amount of knowledge. God qualifies you, God will qualify you, and he uses you if you let him, if you be the willing vessel. But what we've looked at is your character. And it's exactly what Paul touched on tonight. It's the character of a Christian. And what he looked at was the overflow of Christ's love in me. And it was one day the Holy Spirit says to me many years ago, just care care for the people because I really want to know what is my gift and what is my calling and hit the words I just heard the word care and I was getting mad with God because I said care is that it and God said yes that's it just care but that's where it began just from a place of caring for God's people loving on God's people having a heart for God for God's people um, a heart of God for God's people and so it was the overflow I didn't know people were watching but it was from the overflow of just helping people working with women because women is my heart that the pastor had noticed us and this is why they wanted to give me the title and now I didn't look for a title I didn't really want a title but I was in a season of um, preparation I felt the Holy Spirit at that moment in time had spoke to me a few months before that because I have a beauty salon I was in business for six years. He had spoke to me clearly there was going to be change and I needed to get order. Long story short, he took me home. He positioned me home because I would have control of my diary because don't you know we can get busy in business and then sometimes not hear the voice of God at all. So when I come home, it was like a 90, 95 piece puzzle. But when the pastor came, it was like a 100 piece puzzle. I realized and I seen what God was doing, the bigger picture of what God was doing. And so basically, that night we left it that I would pray about it and I would let the pastor know. So for two weeks, I lay at the feet of Jesus. Don't, doesn't the Bible say, be still and know that I am God? And I can honestly tell you, I sat at the feet of Jesus for two weeks and I said, God, really, I'm happy with the women. Really, the men? And he said, yes. My inner woman was screaming no in my natural. And he was like, yes, yes. I'm calling you Elaine. So I had the end of two weeks, I can decide, am I going to disobey the voice of God, the calling of God on my life, the will of God on my life? When I search for four years to actually do the will of God, what is the will of God for my life? I have the choice to obey or disobey. So what it boiled down to hearing his voice and obedience. And so that was the next point of where I obeyed. I stepped out petrified absolutely petrified um, I learned total reliance on God 
total reliance, never to get up there in my own strength. And I, what I loved about the congregation was they embraced me. They embraced me shaken. This was the way I was holding the mic the first day, shaken. But they didn't, maybe one or two judged me when they went home. Maybe I was the talk of the dinner table, I don't know. But majority embraced me and they loved me because they seen the gift in me and the calling of God on my life. And from that place, if I'm honest, a year and a half, I struggled to embrace the role. I struggled a little bit with um, confidence and I learned as I lay, re totally relied on God, he just filled me with his anointing, filled me with his confidence, filled me with his love as I spoke um, from a place of the Holy Spirit, just filling me with what he'd have to say. I seen lives transformed, I seen people touched um, by the heart of the Father, walking through me a normal vessel. And um, the beauty of that place was I began to grow in God, but God had some work to do in me. And that one of the things I had to deal with was fear of man. And, it, and I really struggled with that because I wanted to please the people, everyone in the church. I wanted to please my earthly father. I wanted to please um, everybody to be happy with Pastor Elaine. And I learned, you know what? There's one person that needs to be happy with Pastor Elaine and that's my heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And that's one person I need to obey. And one person I don't, uh, that I need applause from. And that's, it's him only. And I learned to let go of fear of man. And that was um, a time when actually Paul was in Ireland and I was at one of his prophetic one-to-ones. And what happened was in that prophetic one-to-one, -one, there was words spoken from God through Paul that said, I have chosen you and I will not change my mind. That was a very profound moment for me because I played it again and I played it again and I played it again. God has chosen me and something in me, that was the catalyst of propelling me as well as letting go of the fear of man to fully embrace the role that God had called me. And from that place, I had to embrace my own uniqueness, who I am, not to be a copycat, I'm no Joyce Meyer, I'm not Elisa Bevere, I'm Elaine Marit. And that God will use me in my own uniqueness, just as I am, the way I am, if I'm willing to let him. And that was a place of transformation for me. God also began a road of where I was getting some mentoring and where I had some inner healing. Um, stuff I believed I had dealt with, but God wanted to do a deeper healing. And from that place of deeper healing and rooting out through forgiveness and repentance and letting go and letting God heal the wounds and heal the hurts from the past, now he uses me to do that amongst the women. I've had revelation um, of how appropriation of the cross, the finished work of the cross and appropriation of the word of God to our situations, to our wounds, heals and transforms us. Sometimes we say, but I forgive the person but then we forget to ask the Lord to come and heal that wound, whether it be betrayal, disappointment, a hurt. I see so many women paralyzed, um, paralyzed and stagnant and stuck by wounds of the past. And my heart is to see them um, walk in their destiny, walk in their potential, walk in um, the fulfillment and plans and wills of God. And it, the Bible talks about life in all its abundance. And I believe he's called us to walk that life and not to settle for a lesser life. And um, that's, so that's where God is really working on. The last few months we've been having Bible studies because it's so important to get rooted and grounded in the word of God. And it transforms us. And I've seen different issues come up. But as the issues come up, I've seen people be set free. Because God wants us to be able to live in freedom in our identity and who we are and to know the love of the Father. They are critical to live this life in abundance. And so that's where um, I'm really seeing what happens when you see a, an inner healing, not just in the women, in the men, in a church. It means the church has been, is healthy church. The church has been able to be used to its full potential. It means that the, in me, I think of this as the, the funnel of the Holy Spirit. I want nothing to contaminate this funnel. I want it to be able to be free of everything so that God can use it and use me to everything he needs to do in me and through me. And so God has had to do a walk in me. Um, and I've seen the power of God 
um, as I work with others, transform lives and heal people from wounds that the world will tell you can now you can never be healed of true people choosing not by lip service to forgive but from the very depths of their heart to say i choose to forgive and i release myself from any bitter root judgments i have and i have seen them totally being set free totally transformed and i thank the lord that um for this season maybe it's a longer season i am seeing the hand of god because what happens is a free church a free church not a paralyzed church and when a church is free we're able to move in the areas that god wants us to be moved when we are stuck in a rut when we're paralyzed by circumstances paralyzed by disappointment we are not able to see the broken vessel that's sitting beside us we're consumed with oneself and god is wanting to break us free from that mindset to break us free he's given us everything we need to live this life in its abundance and the power of his word is the key it's key and the prayer and letting god that finished work of the cross yes we're a new creation but then there's a part where we have to take that word of god and apply it to our situations apply it by faith to our situations and that's when we see the power of God move and transform our very situations. I hope you've been encouraged by this. It's just a small snippet, snippet of how God is um, doing things among the women, among the solid rock and um, I look forward maybe to talking to you again in the future. Bless you. Thank you so much Pastor Elaine Merritt.